Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. And I'm your host, Deborah Bailey, and my co-host, Carrie Heaps, is returning again uh, for our topic about sales and marketing for small business owners, and we're focusing uh, today on service providers. So um, if you're a coach or a marketer or just dealing with services, right now um, we're going to really have some great information for you. This doesn't mean that if you're in the product that you won't learn as well, but um, we're going to focus on the service providers for today, so I hope that you will um, definitely get a lot out of this information, and um, if you are listening to this in Podomatic, you can come to womenentrepreneursecrets.com, and you can click on radio in the menu items, and you can find out other links for where the show is also available. And it's been distributed also um, in addition to iTunes. It's also on um, some shows are on Google Play and on YouTube now and um, on SoundCloud. So you can um, find some links there or you can click through wherever is the best place for you to listen in. So I hope that you will check that out and you can uh, hear some of the shows and really um, you know, get a lot of good information about um, business and how you can really learn a lot of what the good stuff that we're sharing with you. So I hope that you will do that. So I'm going to get started right now and introduce Carrie. And Carrie Heaps is the founder and publisher of Strictly Marketing Magazine. She's also the host of Strictly Marketing Talk Radio Magazine has recently spun off an online community for women and men too. Looking to gain more media exposure, pitch like a bitch media. She owns Knock On Marketing, a business to business telemarketing and lead generation firm. Her passion is to help other entrepreneurs with their marketing efforts to continue their dream of running a successful business. And you can find out uh, more about Carrie at www.strictlymarketingmagazine.com. So I'm really glad to have you back again, Carrie. I am so excited to be here today, Deb, as always, and just excited about all these wonderful topics. And I just hope everybody listening gets tons of valuable content out of it and applies it. And I'm ready to rock and roll. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I'm, I'm sure they will um, because we're really, you know, sharing a lot of information uh, that they will get a lot out of and learn how to apply to their own businesses. It's really important. Um, you know, we, we come together because we want you to learn from folks who have been out here in the trenches and really want you to learn the real deal. Um, you know, that's so important to both of us, and that's why we're here. So I'm hoping that you take advantage of that and really take in what we're sharing with you because I think that you will certainly learn a lot. And, you know, I, I propose this topic for us to discuss about sales and marketing for small business service providers because my own story was coming up corporate and then going to um, learn um, coaching. I was in coach training for, for several months. And I really enjoyed it. it. really helped me. You know, I came through it and, and really did a lot of work on myself. In the meantime, you know, was I was going through the training. But the thing that I found was I really didn't learn a lot about how to do the sales and the marketing. And it was, you know, they're saying, well, you know, you do a lot of free things. And it's like, well, it's great. But how do you lead to actually learning how to close a sale? They really didn't talk about that. And I know there's a sort of frustration for me and other coaches in my classes. And, you know, you know, the 
that Carrie is an expert in sales and marketing. And I said, you know, this is something I really think is would be really helpful for us to talk about. So that's why um, it prompted me anyway to say, you know, I really want to hear more about how we can learn how to do this, how we focus to sale, how can we do this and feel good about what we're doing. Because there seems to be a lot of feeling with people that, well, you know, too salesy, do this, you know, we, we shrink away from this as though somehow we shouldn't tell people what we're doing and, and want to close a sale, want to make money. I think a lot of people feel that way. They feel uncomfortable. And I think it's time to move past that for us to really claim it and, and know that, yes, we deserve to get paid for what we do. So that's a lot of what's motivation, motivated me to really, you know, want to have this conversation today. So, you know, Carrie, I know that you, you know, you, you do this and this is something that you have a lot of expertise in. So, you know, I want you to jump in there and, <laughs> and talk about, about, you know, the, the sales and marketing piece. Maybe you could share, you know, sometimes it gets a bad rap and I don't really understand it, you know. You know, what are your thoughts about that? Why do you think people tend to shy away from this? Well, I think there's a number of reasons for that. Um, clearly, uh, sales has gotten a bad rap. Marketing will start to get a bad rap. It's just going to be clearly a, a question of when that will happen. Um, I think there's just, you know, we, we've talked about people who are experts in their industry, who are going out, who are teaching, who are uh, making their practices as commonplace uh, in the marketplace, not realizing that what they're teaching is not going to apply to every industry, number one. And number two, uh, their advice doesn't always work. And mm -hmm. the issue is we have way too many of those. Mm -hmm. That's part of the equation. The other part is there's already a fear and a disdain uh, towards the art of selling and, and marketing simply because most people, uh, if they are a hairdresser or they're an accountant or they are, I don't know, a bodybuilder or a plumber, they're very skilled at their craft. They're very good at it. But when it comes time to – they're not – good at sales that that's mm -hmm. just not their forte mm -hmm. uh just like i'm good at sales but accounting and managing money is not really my forte <laughs> <laughs> you know so we all have weaknesses so it sales and marketing is typically going to be a weakness across the board for probably 90 percent of the people so they're already recognizing it as a weakness and if they're able to get a quick fix or a good answer to say hey you don't actually have to do this or don't sell to people um you need to share information or you know they try to take this, the process of selling and turn it into something different and at the end of the day when you strip down all the layers it's still selling mm. um so there's there's that there's the aspect of fear um, and not really wanting to do it. Um, a lot of people don't like salespeople to begin with. They mm -hmm. feel you know, there's still that whole picture of the uh, greasy haired guy, you know, <laughs> sitting in the, the car used car parking lot from the 80s saying, let yes. me sell you a car. And then you also have other people who are, you know, who have gone through uh or know someone that has gone through a presentation where it was just, it was like pulling teeth just to even get them to let them leave, mm. um, you know, high pressure sales tactics. And yeah. they feel like I don't want to do that. Um, and, you know, again, there are, there's different tactics out there. Um, and it's just figuring out which one works for you, but make no mistake about it. You're still going to have to sell. You have to just, you have to get over that. Mm -hmm. Um, as I have told several people in the past, if they want to see what it's like to have their own business, they should certainly take a sales position that is all commission based because that's mm -hmm. going to give them a very good idea of what they're in for and will give them some additional training in the sales aspect. Uh, so I think it's a multitude of things. Um, you know, I I really feel strongly about the first aspect that we that I just brought up about the uh, gurus and, and different individuals who are out there teaching, you know, oh, just, you know, get it, get paid to get interviewed. And, and <laughs> you know, you'll never have to do anything else in your life. Years ago, when I hosted events, you know, in-person events, um, and we would, uh, 
bring on vendors uh, for the events. And most of the vendors, and, and it didn't happen that often, but I would say that when it did, you know, we would have certain people who were vendors who just, even though we would share information with them to say, look, this is the best way to get the most out of the event. Let us know what we can do to help you you know, uh, follow up or, or whatever, whatever part of this you don't need, because that's part of what they paid for. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you would always have certain vendors who would say, nope, no, I don't need any help. And they plop up their, their, uh, uh, you know, their little, uh, signs and, and the different things on their tabletops and stand there and with their arms folded and smile at everybody. <laughs> and they just would have that. Then they were disappointed when nothing happened, but they, mm -hmm. they had that feeling that they throw up the sign that everybody's going to come running and flocking towards them saying, yeah. oh my God, where have you been all my life? How <laughs> I can't live without what you're doing. And they're never going to have to do any more marketing again. And, and it just, it doesn't work that way. Mm. Uh, but there's still, there is still a fair number of people who do believe that, who really believe I'll put an ad in the yellow pages, even, you know, which I picked up the yellow page book the other day and they're pretty tiny, mm. but uh, you know, that they still believe that I put the sign up and everybody will come running in and I won't have to do anything <laughs> and yeah so I, I just I think it's it's a multitude of things I don't think it's one thing I don't think it's something that will get fixed overnight um, I think it's probably going to get worse before it gets better but hopefully we'll be able to share some tips and suggestions with everybody listening that will help them through that process yeah, you, you have definitely uh, covered a lot of wonderful points, Carrie, because I, I think a lot of it is the fear and anxiety around selling because of the idea that selling is some terrible thing that you have to force people to buy or, or harass them or and, and, and uh, too many people have done that because they, they really – have I guess the wrong way of selling I guess and, and that's how I define it it's very overbearing and, and trying to make you do make a decision and and you know I can I, I know from going to uh, buy a car the last time I bought a car was some years ago and I brought a friend of mine with me because I was just ready to go by myself <laughs> because I was like oh my god you know, what is, what's going to happen? This person is trying to try to make me do something. You know, you, you begin to think that you don't have control over yourself and your own decision. Cause you right. think this person is going to control you. You know, isn't that kind of weird? <laughs> it is, but you know, again, it just, I think it goes back to, you know, the four E's that I've always talked about that can be applied to anything. You know, everyone's education level with sales and marketing is different. So if they haven't really researched it or studied it, they're going to, they're automatically at, and they're starting out at a negative number. Mm. Their uh, their experience level with it, if they haven't sold a thing, if they're new to their business, um, they have absolutely no selling experience at all. Again, it's an uphill battle. Um, you know, their expectations is what really will kill them because mm -hmm. they'll set themselves up for failure. And then lastly, the execution of how they go about doing this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have always said, you know, one of the books that I've read that I really do like and I still like today is uh, Go for No, which is the mm -hmm. little parable yes. about the, yeah, about, yeah. you know, you've got to get, and it, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of truth to it. Mm -hmm. You've got to get so many no's before you get a yes. And mm -hmm. for those people who are executing that, process for the first time they get one no they're devastated they yes. can't go back out there but mm -hmm. if you understand that it's part of the process and you have to figure out how many no's that you're going to get until you get a yes you've got to keep going yes. you understand it's part of the process so mm -hmm. um you know those four things will really uh hinder the process for anybody mm -hmm. i'm glad you you um mentioned that actually because i i had interviewed um uh the couple who had written a book and i believe that 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 you're uh, either interviewed them or acquainted with them as well. Mm -hmm. And um, years ago, actually, and when I had a thought about it, you know, what they were saying, I was almost shocked because it, I guess because I wasn't really in this world. And I thought, well, you mean you keep asking and you want to get those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't believe that because I, my orientation wasn't that that's the, not the way it is, you know, because I guess not being in that world and being more in the uh, nine to five world, 
I couldn't understand that. I, I didn't realize that that's really how it worked. I was really pretty shocked. And, and the whole thing is, is that you want to get those no's because you're going to get a yes, but you have to get the no's. You have to really understand that that's part of the game. And I think for the most part, we don't realize that. If you're not in that sales and marketing, or I should say in the sales world, you don't know that. You assume that it's all about trying to force someone to make a decision. Because mm-hmm. you may have been exposed to a person who does that. So you think, oh, that's the norm. And now you're kind of running away from the idea of being that person who does that. But then when you're the person who's offering something people want and you're providing it to them in a certain way and, you, and then they're like, yes, I want that, it's almost shocking. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it it really is. It's um, you know, making connections. I think is it's important and it's vital to your business, and then men, maintaining those connections yes. as well. Yeah. Um, but it's still that art of selling. I mean, you mm. still, you know, as I was telling someone today, we find that it's really not until we get somebody on the phone or get in front of them, we're not closing them. You know, it doesn't happen automatically by itself. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does sometimes. I mean, every once in a while we'll get a sale that will come in that we didn't really have to do anything for. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. most part, you know, we've had to make those connections. We've had to really get them to see, you know, this is the value of what what you're signing up for. This is what you're going to get. This is the help that you're going to get. And then answer any questions that they have. Make them, you know, give them there's no reason for them to, you know, to say no. Mm -hmm. Um, Or even if they do need to think about it, okay, fine. You know, you, you got to go through that follow-up process, but logistically it's still, I don't care if you want to call it cooking or you want to call it (laughs) um, nurturing or you want to call it, um, you know, we're reviewing a couple of different books right now for the magazine and we, one of them um, is, you know, they take the art of selling and they're turning it into, oh, the art of cultivating, um, you know, new uh, business relationships. And, and they had another word for it that they were mm. using. But again, mm-hmm. you can't get around it. It's still sales. Right. I mean, it, it mm-hmm. just, it's still, um, you know, there's, there's words for everything that we do. Maintain, you know, exercising, maintaining mm-hmm. health, dieting, um, you know, you could, there's different ways you could phrase it, but the bottom line is, you know, if you're looking to lose weight, you're looking to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Um, You can Mm -hmm. phrase that any way you want, but (laughs) the bottom line, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. making those connections is, it's just vital. You Mm -hmm. just have to do it, but you've got to go through that process. You have to build that. And the only way you're going to be able to get comfortable doing it is to continue to do it, continue to get so many no's, keep track of that, because that information is only going to help you in the long Mm -hmm. run and become a better salesperson. So if you know, hey, out of every 30 people I talk to, five of them are going to tell me no, but one of them will tell me yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Mm -hmm. you've got to to get one sale. You've got to talk to at least 30 people. So it gives you an idea of, okay, moving forward, this is expected. This is what I need. And when you have that mindset, it just kind of changes the way that you're looking at it. It doesn't change what you're doing, (laughs) but it's still, it's, it's just changing that mindset to make Mm -hmm. it easier for you to make that transition and that there's nothing wrong with that that's fine Mm -hmm. but make no mistake about it you're still selling sorry but you are (laughs) you collect money at any point during the transit during the the course of talking to someone yeah that's a sale that's a sale i'm sorry it is you're right you're right i think for some reason and and that may be something we'll cover or maybe not we may not have the time to go into it but there's so much I belief, I think, in, in selling being bad and, and money changing hands being bad. I'm not sure why, you know, um, when I was in college and, and also in high school, I think uh, that I have to look back on those years <laughs> to mm-hmm. see it's so far, it's so far away. I'm not going to tell you how far, um, but just like working at companies like Sears and working as a cashier. And, you know, people, sometimes you're in a position, you're selling to people. I worked in, like, the um, makeup and, and cosmetic section and, and Sears, and, and people may say, well, I, I need to get a perfume. I don't know what I need to get. I need to get that for a gift. And now you're showing them. And, and I may not look at this sales at the time, but that's what I was doing. You know, I'm, I wasn't really looking at it as, as, a, as a selling exercise, but I was selling. To that person who didn't know what they wanted, but I was like, oh, here's this, try that. 
maybe this will be nice. You know, you're not forcing anything on someone. You're showing them something that they really want and they don't know. So you said, okay, how try this and try that. And that's very much about when you have a service. Maybe that person needs something. You know, someone told me, well, they need what you're offering. And, and it's hard sometimes to make that connection that you think that they need that thing. Because you feel, oh, my God, am I forcing it? Am I trying to push it on people? You know, I mean, I don't know, Carrie, since you're, you're an expert in this, have you ever felt like any kind, I, I can't say reluctance, that's not the right word, but I mean, for people who may not have that skill or feel they have that skill, there's the, that gap where you feel, oh my God, I don't know why I need to do this, and maybe they're not going to like me if I tell them about the service. You know, what would you tell that person who's so afraid to share what they have to offer to um, a, pers- a prospective buyer? I would say a few things. Number one, you're you are just going to have to get over it. <laughs> Right. Um, as harsh right. as that sounds, but the, you know, again, the only way they're going to get over it is to get out there and get it done. Yeah. Um, you know, nobody can take your hand, especially if you're a solo business owner and you're the expert, you're the person mm. who's supposed to be helping these people. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, you started your business for a reason. You've got a passion about it and think about that. Think about the passion. You know, if you started your business because, um, you wanted to provide a good, valuable service at reasonable prices that you see other people in the same industry mm-hmm. that might be ripping other people off or, mm-hmm. you know, you really just want to enlighten them or help them, you know, use that and, and, to, and just be honest and tell people when you're approaching them, Hey, this is why I started my business. This is why I'm passionate about what I do and how mm-hmm. I can help you. Are you going to promote to people that aren't going to, they're not going to buy from you? Uh, You might do a presentation, you might follow up with them for a year or so and nothing, you know, that happens. That happens to all of us. And, you know, there's, there's different things you can do. I mean, you put them in for a a follow up and, and just follow up and touch base with them periodically. You know, you can do that. And again, you have to realize it goes back to your perception of what you're doing. If you look at it like, oh, wow, I'm only, you know, these people are just going to think I, I want money from them. Well, you do. You want to be paid <laughs> for what you do. Right. You know, know your worth. I mean, I posted something on social media last week about this exact topic. You know, there's so many, and, and this is something I want to touch on too while we're talking to everyone is, you know, a lot of people say, well, give them a free white paper or give them a free mm. product or a free sample of what you do. We no longer do that. We absolutely do not do that. The people who get the freebies are the people who have paid us. Mm. It's a bonus added gift for signing up with us or for doing whatever. But we no longer do free gifts. And we mm-hmm. have found out in the long run that it actually backfires in, mm. in the two industries that I'm in. Because we find that the people who are there for the free gift, they don't have the money. They can't They can't hire me. They can't mm-hmm. hire my company. They don't mm-hmm. have the money. So if somebody, clearly that makes them not, a good client for me because Mm -hmm. if they can't afford it, then, you know, uh, you know, we have other things that we've been doing where we create informational products that are very inexpensive. And if they're not willing to invest nine or $10 in that, well, I can't help them anyway, right? Because you have to understand something, no matter what industry you're in, people have to want to help themselves Mm -hmm. and, and fix the problem Mm -hmm. for you to be able to help them. And this applies to any industry. If you have, I'll give you an example. If you have a plumbing business and somebody calls you and says, my living room's underwater. I, you know, come over here right away. And then you get over there, you shut the water off and you're like, okay, well, the next thing we got to do is we got to pump this water out, you know, to avoid any mold damage or, or to avoid it, you know, any further damage to your home. No, I got a bucket. We can, we, let's just take buckets <laughs> and, and throw it all outside. And, and, you know, I, you know, I just don't have the money to do that or, you know, it's, <laughs> Again, you can tell them, well, we can do this, but this is not the best way to handle it because you are going to have mold set in, you know, the longer mm-hmm. this sits in. And if they fight you on it, there's, what are you going to do? 
Right. You know, take it and, and set it up anyway and do it for free. No, mm -hmm. I mean, you can only help people as long as they're going to let you help them. Right. And that applies to any industry. It's the same thing with coaching. If you have a client that hires you and they pay you a couple thousand dollars to coach them and you put together a plan and they're like, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> what do you mean? I got it. And if they're going to fight you every step of the way, they don't see the value in what you're doing anyway. They don't mm -hmm. want the help. But there's a lot of people out there who feel, well, if I read reach out for help. It looks like I'm asking for help. So it looks like I'm making progress when in reality they're not. Yeah. Um, and it, that happens in every industry, not a lot, but it does happen. So, you know, I would also just say, go back to what you, you know, what, you know, you're an expert in, in the industry. If you want to share information and give out free advice, get booked in the media. Do interviews and that's your free information right there. And that's, you know, don't do, don't do white papers. Don't give them a free product. I mean, I'm even getting to the point where we don't even do discounts anymore. If, you know, we'll have a payment option, but you're paying a little bit more for it, but it's, it's right. just for the convenience. But people have to learn to invest in themselves. And that's something as a seller, when you have your own business, you have to understand that. Yes. Um, People have to be willing to invest. Now, you're going to have certain people that will never hire you because they're only going to go around. They're going to look to see who has the cheapest price, and that's who they're going to go with. Um, mm -hmm. And it could be because of their financial situation or because they feel like, well, I'm just they're always going to go buy whoever has the cheapest price. Mm -hmm. um, that happens. And, you know, I would say to people, don't. <coughs> One of the worst things you can do is lower your prices. One of mm -hmm. the worst things you can do is, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say give a discount, but I, I would, I would, me personally, one of the worst things I can do is give people a discount mm -hmm. because it just ensures they're never going to sign up. They'll be like, yeah. well, I can't do it this time, but maybe next time when, you know, next time the promotion rolls around, call me. I could call them 150 times. They're never going to sign up yeah. just because. So, Thinking about that in terms of, you know, when you're because there are, believe it or not, you know, there are going to be some people who want your service that you're not going to want to sell to them. You're not going to want them as a client. Mm -hmm. Your gut instinct is going to kick in um, and you need to follow that. Mm -hmm. um, so there are going to be some people you don't you want to attract the people who are going to be ideal clients for you. Mm -hmm. um, you need to, to kind of stick to that and stick to that. A whole realm of, of finding clients for yourself mm -hmm. um, when you're looking and, you know, be selective. There's absolutely nothing wrong. And I can tell you from personal experience. I know you can, Deb, you can tell them from personal experience. Mm -hmm. You have one client that you bring on board and you say, oh, I don't know about this person. You bring them on board. It's one of, it'll be the worst six months of your life. <laughs> and we're laughing about it now, but we've both yes. been through it. It's true. And sometimes yeah. it's better to say, you know what, I don't think I'm the best fit for you. You know, you might want to continue looking or perhaps talk with so-and-so and best of luck, you know, with mm -hmm. what you're doing. Um, it's better to let go of business at that mm -hmm. point. Well, that's true. And I think that people may think that, oh, I've got to take whoever um, shows up. And, you know, I can talk from uh, what I, as I was saying about being a coach and training, the idea of taking on free uh, clients to start with. So therefore, you really, there's a sense that you're taking on someone for free that you're not really being discerning about who you're taking on. You're taking on just about anybody who is going to take on your coaching, but then you don't really learn how to, how to make these decisions later down the road because you just want to get the experience. And maybe these aren't the right people for you. And maybe you really can't help them because they're not really open. But it's free. So that's why they're doing it. But they're not really going to do the things they need to do to, to make the um, changes they need to make in their life. So they end up to you being frustrated. I think it kind of leads you down a bad road. And then it's easy to start to think negatively about having clients and think, oh, this is going to be the same experience. It's going to be negative. Um, or I shouldn't ask for this price or that price because, uh, well, you know, I start for free. So I think it leads people to have these really low expectations and, and really to value themselves. And that's the thing that I think is really bad because I feel that that's um, what I got from that experience. And it's not, it's not good for you because you're, you're talking about I mean, I said that I mentioned coaches, but any, any sort of survivors have to be coached. 
when you start to devalue yourself and devalue what you do, then at least you'd be frustrated, angry, upset, resentful. And then it's probably going to lead to you disabandoning the business at some point. You're not finding the right clients. We'll be right back after this short break. This is Women Entrepreneurs Radio, available on bbccoach.podomag.com and iTunes. Some of the things that I would recommend right away, and I just had a couple of things I've been kind of jotting down as we're, we're talking, mm-hmm. um, you know, just to share with everybody is, you know, again, going back to the free stuff, no freebies. <laughs> I, you know, again, I just can't stress yeah. it enough. I mean, if you want to have like, okay, maybe like, Hey, sign up for our email list. We offer mm-hmm. uh, free tips or whatever and let them, you know, if you want to build your email list, you know, you can do that. Maybe have that on your site, but I would not, you know, I see so many people that are giving away content that they really should have people pay for. Uh, you know, the reason I'm so against free stuff is most people who do sign up, get the free stuff, they will never buy from you and they'll never even read or listen to the free stuff that you gave them. Yeah. So those are people who clearly they're not a good client because they're never going to pay you. So move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. It's just free information is No, not a good idea. Um, you know, if you, if you don't believe it, try it, see if you feel like it's working for you and you're getting tons of people that are signing up for your email list. My question to you would be, okay, great. How many of them have bought from you? And if you come back and say none or one or two, then you need to reevaluate what you're doing. Um, so you, again, no free stuff. Um, Create a strong follow-up process. You know, you need to you need to get out there, get in your community, do some networking, join the chamber, or you don't even really have to join anymore. You can just pay to go to their events. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, go to their events. Uh, you know, meet with people, and you know, just start to really network and and uh, get to know some of these other people uh, who can help you with your business. And you know, who would you know also you know don't go there with the intention of selling. Go there with the intention of making alliances that, Mm -hmm. you know, strategic partners. So, you know, you go there, let's say you're, uh, you know, if you're a hairdresser, I find hairdressers are one of the worst industries as far as sales is concerned. They Mm -hmm. don't, they will get someone in there who does a haircut and, you know, they never ask them, you know, hey, have you thought about having, you know, your hair colored, you know, I'm like, coloring Mm. specialist or you know we have we're doing a two-for-one product buy would you like to you know these are some really good products I would recommend for your hair would you like me to go ahead and have that added on today you know where they have so many selling opportunities to have Mm -hmm. and they don't do it yeah that's true and and they should they could easily get that done Mm -hmm. so if you're a hairdresser and you go to a chamber event and you're talking to different people you know some of the people that you really need to look out for are you know wedding planners you know Mm -hmm. because those people who are getting married need someone to Mm -hmm. do their hair Mm -hmm. um you need to be networking with people who sell cosmetics uh people who um Maybe people who own a dress shop because people who are getting makeovers, you know, or they want to buy a new wardrobe, maybe they want a new look. You know, you need to be partnering with people who can refer business to you and you can refer business to them because that that needs to work both ways too. you know, referring that business. Mm -hmm. And if you're not comfortable with the selling process, you're not going to be able to refer anybody. It's just not going to happen. You're just going to be too meek and timid to say anything. You know, those are some some good things to do. And then, you know, don't just meet with them at the chamber event. Call them up and say, hey, look, I'm off today. Do you want to meet for a cup of coffee or would you like to come by and see the salon and I can give you a tour and we can sit down and talk. And, you know, there's just so many different things that you can do if you start to really think about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So those are some things that you're going to want to do. You're also going to want to. you know, just not just attend networking events, but, you know, you need to go out there. If you're not going to do any advertising, um, you need to go out there and and do a little bit of cold calling. Mm-hmm. Um, a great example of that would be, oh, we'll use our hairdresser again. Um, you know, the hairdresser, if it's prom season, you know, or it's coming up on prom season, go out to the, you know, your local high schools and, you know, let them know, hey, look, I printed up some flyers. Is there, could I put some of these out or is there a place I could put them or can I get with, uh, you know, whoever does the prom committee, if I could talk with them and I can give, you know, the girls a discount or, 
you know, that's the time to apply a discount. But, you know, something that would be a benefit to them uh, for letting you do that and would also be beneficial to you to get new business in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's it's just uh, there's a process to it. You have to really and, and you need to consistently be doing that. You know, every business owner goes through this. But one of the times it's the times that you need money. It's too late. You go out and you try to market at that point. It's too late. Mm -hmm. You have to consistently market and not just consistently market. Let's just say you do all of these things and you have 20 new clients that came through the door. Well, you need to learn to keep those clients, you know, continue with follow up. You need to, you know, do a little email newsletter or, you know, let them know, hey, look, I or have a punch card. You know, if Mm -hmm. you come back in, you know, if you fill this out, you'll get. Uh, a free product or you'll get a free haircut or, you know, something mm-hmm. to get incentivize them to continue to come back. And even saying, look, you know, um, I like to book my schedule out, you know, would you like to go ahead and book something for, you know, three weeks from now, you mm-hmm. know, come back in, get your hair trimmed and try to get them on the books right then and there. If they don't want to do that, say, okay, that's fine. Why don't I give you a call, you know, next week and we'll schedule yes. something mm-hmm. or I'll send you an email. That way you've got their contact information and you can do that. Um, but you need to learn to keep them. And, and the only way you're going to keep them is if you stay present in their mind, you're, you're sending out an email or you're calling them every once in a while to check in, um, you know, or you have an actual mailing list where you're mailing things out. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to do that. There's, you've got to retain the people that you're getting. You don't want to always have to, um, you know, consistently, uh, go through the, the revolving door. Um, so those are some things that I would suggest as well. And, you know, but the follow up process is just vital and it's going to be a little bit different for every single business that's out there. Mm-hmm. You know, some people like this and I'm not a big fan of it, but, you know, a referral fee, you know, if you have somebody yeah. that refers someone to you where people will, you know, hey, I'll give you a commission off of what what is done. A lot of people will sign up for something like that, but it it tends to stop there. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never really been a fan of that. Um, I feel like if people are going to refer to you, they're going to refer to you or they're not. It's going to be one or the other. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when you just add money to the equation, I don't think it prompts them to do anything any quicker. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's that. So, you know, but just having a very strong follow-up system and it doesn't have to be anything, you know, I've done segments on follow-up. It doesn't have to be an expensive program. It doesn't even have to be computerized. I mean, Mm -hmm. I was doing follow-up calls today. I got my little three-ring binder fat book out, and I've been making calls and making notes in pencil. I mean, Mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be fancy. You just have to do the work. Mm -hmm. So those are some things I would recommend to people. Yeah, that's that's really good because I I had talked to someone who I connected with on LinkedIn, and um, it it was very interesting because we said I have our call, and, and she's a VA, and we just started chatting. Um, I'm not even sure we got the topic. We're talking about book publishing, I guess, because I was talking about writing. And, you know, she reads romance and, and I write, um, romance, but I write like science fiction and paranormal. She reads a different genre. But we started mm-hmm. talking about that. And it was kind of like we made a connection. And, you know, I'm in New Jersey. She's in Idaho. <laughs> and you would think, well, what is that? You know, but the thing is now she's in my mind. Mm-hmm. And now if I come across someone who needs a VA who has those skills that she mentioned, she's top of mind now. Yeah. You know, just that simple conversation. You never know how that's going to lead you to something because now you're in that person's mind in a way maybe you never thought you would be because you made that connection with someone who you never would have met because you're nowhere near them. And maybe you think, well, I have nothing in common with this person because you assume you don't. But then you have this conversation and you find out, oh, yeah, we do have something in common. And now if you find that there's some other um, thing going on, you may think, oh, okay, you know, this person may be able to do this or I can make this connection with that person. And maybe there's something that can refer to that person or whatever is going on. You know, it, it's something to consider because you never know. Because that definitely is a way for you to make that connection with someone else and market what you're doing and they're marketing what they're doing. So now if someone else who knows about it, then that person now can know, tell someone else, oh, yeah, I talked to so-and-so and they do this. Um, hmm, if you're looking for that, maybe you should check with her, you know, or check with him. 
it's it's you know the the word of mouth thing is really the basics of marketing. So don't don't put that down. You know, don't don't think that oh that's not important because it really is important. Just people telling people. That's really what it comes down to. But you know, as you're saying, Carrie, it it's just kind of making that connection. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's a process. I mean, people have to get used to it. But again, if you're not gonna if you're not gonna do anything about it, it's just yeah. not gonna work. Yeah, well, yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> that's another thing. That's another thing. You know, a lot of times we get stuck in that when we're just kind of spinning around, but we're not really um, actually taking action on, on the things that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I really think we probably have covered a lot of this, this topic, but I, you know, I probably should ask this in the beginning. But in your opinion, you know, we have sales and marketing, a lot of times they're lumped together. You know, would you personally have a definition of what you think the difference is between sales and marketing as far as the service-based provider can keep in mind? Um, yeah, the basic definition is it's the same definition. And the best mm. way I can explain it to people is, you know, here in Florida, um, if you want to go to Miami there's and you want to drive there and you're in Jacksonville or you're in Tallahassee, there's, you know, you're driving – you can take 95 or you can take a one a, or you can take the turnpike. It's different routes, same destination. And that's what marketing and sales are. Same destination, just different routes. But at some point they will all interconnect and you know what marketing does. It's wasted if sales does nothing with that information and what, sales does is you know again if they don't use the information that marketing apply gives to them to you know close sales or or you know to do anything with those leads that information's wasted and if you know the sales team if they're not doing a good job closing um or they just don't follow up you know it's just one affects the other it's still Mm -hmm. the same like i said it's still the same destination it's just different ways of getting there but a lot of people Mm -hmm. think oh well all i do is i'll just do some marketing i'll throw up a facebook page and Mm -hmm. uh, you know i don't i don't need salespeople at that point or i don't need to do any selling uh Mm -hmm. wrong you know (laughs) go sit down (laughs) um that just simply isn't true. I mean, like I said, I've probably had maybe one or two sales that have come in strictly from the marketing I've done. What the sales that have come in have been the information that's brought in by the marketing. We follow up on that. We do physical contact. We're following up on the phone or, you know, we might be sending another email. Um, you know, we're logistically getting involved in the process and closing that sale and collecting the money. Um, so, you know, the whole purpose of doing marketing is you want to make more sales. The whole pers- mm-hmm. the whole purpose of, of sales is you want to close and make more sales. So, mm-hmm. again, it's still the same thing. Um, you know, depending upon how large your organization is, you might have some people who it's different processes, it's different departments. They're located on different parts of the, you know, in different parts of the country. And one, it's like one hand doesn't tell the other one what they're doing. Right. And it's, it's just a waste. Um, you know, those are two departments that it's vital that they work together. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a salesperson and your marketing department of your company just released a big commercial, um, about, Maybe it's a promotion that they're doing. Maybe it is a discount. Maybe you get one month free and the sales rep has knows nothing about it. And they're out there meeting with the prospect and the prospect brings it up to the salesperson. That's news to them. It throws the whole thing off. The salesperson Mm. is embarrassed. They might even say, I didn't really know anything or let me, uh, yeah, I got to check on that or, you know, puts them in an awkward position. And, you know, logistically, the person sitting across from them might even be thinking, why didn't this guy bring this up from the get go? Mm -hmm. You know, it was on national TV. Uh, That's happened a lot. And Mm -hmm. it makes the departments resent one another. So I would even say if you're a small business and you have one person who's doing your marketing and you do have a sales rep or you're doing the sales, you guys need to work with one another. That information that the sales people collect in the field is priceless to where the Mm -hmm. marketing is going to go. Mm-hmm. They need to sit down at least once a month or, or every other month and, and have a conference, even if it's virtual, and say, look, this is what we're hearing out in the field. Or, you know, this is what, you know, these are the issues that we're encompassing. So marketing can work on that and say, okay, what can we do to make this, you know, 
make that sales process flow better. Right. Um, you know, because again, bottom line is you don't sell anything. I don't care how big the company is. At some point, you're going to go under. You know, it's right. just that simple. I mean, this is not. I, people want to make it complicated, and it's not. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's an excellent point. That's a way to to describe it. It's very important uh, for you to tie those things together uh, for you to, you know, for your business. So um, I think we've covered a lot of a lot of those uh, uh, points. And you know, I, I just want to just check back with you, Carrie. I think. You just in case you have any other um, final thoughts on this, or do you think that we've covered as much as we can on this topic? The only other thing I would mention, and in closing, is, and it's just a huge overlooked point, and especially if you are a service provider, Mm -hmm. you really need to start getting into the media. You need Mm -hmm. to start getting interviewed, podcast interviews, you know, post in other people's blogs, write for magazines, um, try to get in with your local TV station. You know, media is such a huge part of it's. It's basically it's it's free publicity. You get booked on a TV program, or you get booked on um, your local radio station and thousands of people are hearing you there you're getting an opportunity to showcase your expert status and if you use that right this can help you in that process it's it's getting the marketing done it's taking that interview and using it in your sales efforts and letting people know oh by the way i was just featured on you know kpmz fm talking about whatever, um, you know, thought you might be interested in, in listening and share a link of the interview. You have absolutely no idea the power of that when you're closing sales, mm-hmm. because all it takes is for them to take a listen to that. If they've talked to you and they've talked to two other service providers and you're the one who's been featured on the local media, that's going to tip the scales for you more than what you think. So mm-hmm. I would definitely suggest you, and I think there's a huge fear with that too, Deb. It's a mm-hmm. fear, you know, they don't want to look like an, idiot or they don't, you know, they don't want to come across as, you know, saying something stupid. But Mm -hmm. logistically, if if you do it right, um, it can be such a valuable tool in your arsenal to close more sales. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's just you have to, again, getting over that fear. Keep in mind, you're you started this business because you're supposed to be an expert at what you do. Show it and start acting like it. Totally agree with that. That's that's all great stuff and, and stuff for you to take away from this conversation. So I hope that you will do that and um, really run with it and understand that you have to do the work to get the clients and to close the sales and to not be afraid of it because that's all part of, of business. So I hope you've learned a lot from this um, this uh, episode. And um, certainly, please, um, you know, if you have questions or anything, you check in with um, Carrie at www.strictlymarketingmagazine.com and also um, womenentrepreneursecrets.com as well, um, and also on iTunes. If you are following the show there, definitely leave feedback as well because it always helps the show be found if you um, leave your feedback on um, iTunes and we will be much appreciated. So I hope that you get a lot out of what we're saying here today and you will also share this on social media um, if you really enjoy what you heard. Uh, so once again, I want to thank you again, Carrie, for joining me for the show because um, you shared a lot of great information and thank you so much for that. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to be here, and I hope that uh, everybody got some really good, valuable content that they can use moving forward. Yes, I, I, I'm sure they did. So, um, everyone, it's a Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey, and Carrie Heaps. So, I'm um, glad you could join us today, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on facebook.com slash women entrepreneurs and on the website women entrepreneur secrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on dbcoach.podomatic.com and on iTunes.